It's time for Washington Fish Quest. This episode, Washington Shadding, the complete experience. Hey Washington Fish Questers, Blake here. You know, when it comes to fishing, I really am more of a fish quester than a fish catcher. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, when I go fishing, fishing is a big part of fishing, if you can believe that. But I also like the adventure of it, you know? I like to go to a place and really know it. So I'm taking my annual pilgrimage down to Bonneville Dam to get my shad for the year, you know? and. Uh, Often I'll do that fishery and I'll knock the shad dead, you know, I'll have a really great day, but then I'll come back and I don't really feel that much refreshed, you know, don't get me wrong, it's a blast when you're reeling in those fish, but I think for me to really knock off the dust of the drudgery of everyday life, <laughs> I need to have some adventure with my fishing, you know? So this time, this year, I'm going down at night early so I can camp. I'm going to camp at Beacon Rock Campground and then I'm going to uh, meet my buddy Brian on the other side of the river to go look at the fish passage and uh, there's, a, there's a fish hatchery over there, there's at least some sturgeon to look at. And I hope to go to a local restaurant and don't worry, there will be shadding. But at any rate, with this trip, unlike the ones I've been doing for the last 10, 11 years going on down to Bonneville, I really want to, you know, kind of have like a renew the soul type of a trip where you really soak it in. So, jump aboard the chuckle wagon. We're off to fun town. <laughs> been a very nice drive. Coming up on 9 p.m. just about to pull into the campsite here. Uh, Beacon Rock State Park is actually quite large and uh, we'll see if I get lost or, uh, or what but there's like I said a lot of great hiking there and I look forward to camping there for the first time. All right I just went past I think it's called Pleff Pleffler Road. <laughs> I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it but apparently that's not the one you're supposed to turn on. That's like where the ranger station is and that sort of thing. You can hear Google telling me I'm going the wrong way but as far as I know the individual campsites are like past that road so the next left. Aha, I did go the right way. Let's see here, it looks like campground to the left. Oh, very cool. I didn't know it was built by the Citizen Conservation Corps in the late 30s, early 40s. Ooh, here I am, number 18. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, I can pull around. This would be a great, great camping site to have a boat. Oh, I am digging this. Not one, but two staircases. Talk about privacy, holy smokes. This is great, look at this. I'm just surrounded by trees. There is, I cannot see my neighbors except across across the way. Wow, this is an excellent campsite. Someone has a clothesline up here. <laughs> but wow, look at this. Trail right there. Walk down that after I get the tent set up. Since it's just me today, we're rolling with the small tent. Well, it's pretty dang late, but since I'm gonna leave, you know, before first light, I'm gonna go ahead and stumble down this trail here. All right, looks like I stumbled upon Mosquito Lagoon because they are all over me. I'm gonna head back. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get my poles ready, then head to bed. I got a main and a backup. Well, I'll do though. Let me show you my tackle blocks while I'm here at the campground instead of while I'm down shoulder to shoulder fishing with my fellow shadows. All right, so this is what I'm working with. I just got one kind of clear box here. Here's shad darts untied. Here's all my pre rolls. Uh, I got my pliers there, and that's just in case I need to pinch some new lead. But I do have uh, these are one ounce, you got half an ounce, three quarter ounce. I might have that wrong, but I know I have basically like leads ready to go from one half, three quarter, and a full ounce. And here's some random leads and weights, some more rock weights. I got my swivels, got some beads, and I got some leader down here. In the car I have a spool of uh, like 15 pound test in case I somehow ran out of line or something like that in the, during the trip. But I do like to bring two poles. So I got, I got a pole with a braid. It has a mono at the end. It has about three feet of mono at the end of the braid tied on there than a, a mono leader. And then... I had just a backup with I think that's 15 pound test. So if my mon if my braid gets jammed up or something like that, I'll switch switch to this one and uh, not lose a beat. And like I said, I have extra line just in case I uh, somehow went through them both. Well, today ended up just being a travel day, but that's okay. I feel like a kid the day before Christmas, so I'm going to get up and the 
fishing grounds are only 15 minutes away instead of three hours <laughs> so that's gonna be sweet I've never been there early in the morning and although I need to get up you know before first light I decided not to set an alarm I'm doing the old uh, chug a lot of water trick and then I'll get up you know cuz I'll have to go to the bathroom so I, I feel like I've drank it almost a gallon at this point but probably not but I've just been chugging it so I'm gonna gonna hit the hay see you in the morning What time is it? Oh no! I slept in! And why is my sleeping bag drenched? Alright, it's not even five yet. I'm sneaking out of the campsite. It's funny, I didn't notice when I pulled in, but look at Beacon Rocks right here. This is so dang cool. Not since the earlier years of me fishing here have I arrived when it hasn't just been car by car by car. Look at this. There's, uh, there's cars here, but it's it's not too many yet. That's yeah, gonna be pretty wild actually fishing fishing by yourself for I don't know how long I'll get. Ten minutes, thirty minutes, an hour, you know, but uh, it's a shoulder to shoulder meat fishery, so I've never I've never experienced this since maybe like I said, 10, 11 years ago it wasn't uh, quite like it is now. You can go back and watch my first shad quest where I didn't know what I was doing and look at look at all that bank I had, isn't that crazy? Alright, so I'm right up near the boundary of the dam and this is where everybody's uh, piled up as you can imagine. Alright, I'm going to put on a chest cam when I get down there just to not be too obnoxious with the filming. What? <laughs> oh. That was my uh, neck guard. I was like, what in the world? There we go, I got one. It's, my, it's mine already. <laughs> Oh yeah, Columbia River tarpon, baby. First hour was a bit slow. I went two for three, and uh, Phil our next to me is doing a little better. I think he's gotten four. Uh, overall, though, it's been been pretty slow. But check this out. There is still nobody down river, so that's just good intel for next time if I fish on a weekday. All right, well, what do you say we go check out that hike? Mighty Beacon Rock. Oh ho ho! Climb inside a volcano. Well, that doesn't sound very smart. Oh, Beacon Rock's remnant of a young volcano. Very cool. Oh, cool, there's somebody climbing the rock. Very sunny but windy day. Oh my word, for some reason I didn't know we actually get a descent up Beacon Rock. You can't see that from the road. I can't believe I didn't know this used to be a volcano for one. For two, I didn't know you could rappel up it like that guy is. And for three, I didn't know you could climb up the back of it here, even on the trail. I tell you, I've been driving by it for 11, 12 years, and eh, that's what I get for not, uh, not just, you know, enjoying life, I guess. Wow. There it is up there. Here's the head of me. I cannot believe I've never done that. Ooh, and there's a monarch butterfly. Hi, Mark. And look at this beautiful view 
of the mighty Columbia. Border down there. Wow. That's a million dollar view. Holy smokes, look at this. What did I sign up for? My ascension continues. Whew. I already feel pretty high. Look at that, there's a the tree line well above it. I love where uh, stone meets plank like this. Feel your weight bending it down. Knowing it's two inches of wood from you and your fate at the bottom of the beacon rock. This trail built by Henry J. Bige. Wonder if that's any relationship to Mary J. I see Biddle now. <laughs> I guess I was a little off on the name there. Oh, the view just gets better and better. I cannot believe I've never done this. And look at this. Oh my gosh. Could film an action movie here. Berries find a way. Do 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 do. Holy smokes! I'm king of the world! There's an army! Look at this, even the ground is cool. Wow, look at the road ahead, holy smokes. Ooh, there's the shatters down there. There's the dam. I'm on the northern facing part of Beacon Rock now. So the, the part on the south that's facing the Columbia River is, you know, wind, wind beaten and somewhat desolate, you know. It's such a harsh, harsh ecosystem on that side. Then the north side that's facing facing inward towards the beautiful Cascade Range, it's lush and forest-like and very protected from the wind. You see there's no wind in those trees, whereas on the other side it's just getting beaten down. Back on the Columbia River side, you can probably hear the wind. Look at this tree. Oh, look at that view. Roll on, Columbia, roll on. Oh, this is it. The last few steps. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Whoa. I did it. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, there's the final view. Ain't it a beaut? It's going to be about 87 degrees today. I'm wearing a windbreaker, but just for sun protection. Got my old man sun head on, too. All right, first cast new spot. So I joked earlier that these were Columbia River Tarpon. Chad are actually a member of the herring family. This one's about the size of a herring, but hey, I'll take it. Oh, oh no. Didn't know this was a rock fishing episode. I looked around, but alas, nobody heard my hilarious rock fishing line. Oh yeah. That's a nicer one that I've been catching. Whoops. That's what I get for bringing a backup rod. All right, all this shad catching's made me hungry. Let's go uh, find a restaurant, somewhere to eat. All right, so I'm entering Stevenson. That's just a few miles down the road from Bonneville Dam. Just keep driving. I really go to it because I always stop at Bonneville Dam and Chad and head back, but uh, looking forward to finding some eats there. Ah, uh, Stevenson. A town so nice they named it Stevenson. I'm actually not that hungry, so I might just find something to peck on here. Bingo, the cabin. I've never dined here, but uh, they had me at Sasquatch holding a giant soft serve. <laughs> Fancy eats. Well, the grill was off and they were out of bagels, so uh, not a lot to choose from. So I went with this, it's called a uh, whirlwind. So it's a blizzard knockoff. So it's a vanilla ice cream with your whatever you want mixed in. So Butterfinger is one of the things they had. So let's, let's give that a try. 
that's what you expect. I mean, no complaints, but I'm not, not going to rave either, you know. Uh, but tasty. That's big. It's a decent. Oh, come on. Woo. Easily my nicest one of the day. All right, I'm using my I'm using my usual setup. If you watch my Shadow 101 back in the day. So basically, it's a uh, braided braided line, and then I have about three or four feet of mono tied onto the end of that. Then I got the swivel. I'll either have a weight above the swivel uh, with a bead between the swivel and the weights, or it'll be as uh, one of the swivels that have the uh, three-way swivel, so you just have the weight off the bottom. Uh, then I have a leader that's usually three, four feet long, and at the end, just a shad dart. You cast out, uh, you know, and you retrieve. The speed can change throughout the day. Sometimes they like it a really fast retrieve. Sometimes they like it slower, but uh, you basically cast out straight in front of you and then just start reeling the back and find, find a good uh, speed. You want your weight to be bouncing on the bottom. Uh, they're going to be be on the bottom, and their bite is uh, pretty light usually. Sometimes not not always, but oftentimes you'll feel a little peck, and you just let them have it. My word, the wind kicked up quick. Columbia River is kind of famous for that. It goes goes from placid to white caps of death in literally about a minute. Filming this in the truck so the audio doesn't get drowned out. So this is a really good time for me to go look at the, the fish viewing area. I'm going to do that in the Washington side where you can see the, the viewable fish passage. And then I'm going to go over the Bridge of the Gods on the Oregon side. I'm going to meet up with my buddy Brian. And you can check out his channel here. I'll plug it later too. Uh, but we're going to look at the sturgeon hatchery. I know you can at least see some big sturgeon over there. So I'm super looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let's go look at some fish. I have arrived. Looks like a nice water level. Oh, it's so many shad. Oh yeah, look at them lamprey. Wow, look at this mess of lampreys. So when I was a kid growing up, I'd play in the Sukumchuk River around Bukota, and they would run all the way, what's that, carp? <laughs> There's a big old carp coming up. Watch out, carp. Oh, well these guys won't be won't be sucking any blood because they're they're coming up over the spawn. They start their life in fresh water and then go out, you know, and live in salt water. They spend quite a bit in fresh water though. Go out to the salt water, it's juveniles in fresh water. Go out to the salt water, then they come back to spawn just like a salmon does, so they're dronomous. Very cool fish. They're threatened here in their native range. Uh, very uh, important uh, ceremonial, at least, maybe substance, I don't know, to First Nations that uh, folks that depended on them. And I've heard they're actually extremely good smoked, but I'll never know. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, when I was a kid growing up on the Skookumchuck River or around it in Bukota, uh, they, these guys run all the way up to spawn, so all the way up the Chehalis, almost to the Skookumchuck Dam, so hopefully some of them still make that run. All right, I'm on Bridge of the Gods. It is a toll bridge, unfortunately. I have to pay three bucks to cross, but it's worth it to see my buddy Brian and some big sturgeon. All right, coming up on Bonneville Fish Hatchery. This place is new to me. Looks like trout and sturgeon ponds this way. Ah, got a bunch of fry in there. So as you know from the title of my channel, I'm Washington focused, so I don't have too much information about this hatchery. I know it was built in 1909. It's Oregon's biggest of 33 hatcheries in the state, and it's home to Herman the Sturgeon, assuming he's still around, which is a real big sturgeon. All right, I ran into Brian. Uh, Brian has a great channel, P and W Vintage Outdoors. It uh, explores, uh, you know, fishing traditions around here, including infrastructure, techniques, that sort of thing, as well as some new fishing, like smallmouth bass. Yeah, yeah. We're, we do all kinds of different fishing on the channel, but we also explore the historic spots and all the important places in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, primarily around Oregon, but uh, I also like to sneak over on the lake side of the river, too. So. Heck yeah, so yeah, look out for maybe some future collabs with Brian. I got one question for you, though, Brian. Is Herman still around? I don't know if he's still around, but he might be over there. All right, well, let's go take a look. Yeah, look at this. This is very cool. 
Oregon's hatcheries are really neat in this way. I remember, not this hatchery, but I remember going to another one where I had a really good sturgeon viewing when I was a kid. So neat just to see them cruising around like this. Yeah, there's four of them under the tree. All right, here we go. Should be able to see Herman in here. God, look at that. Herman's as big as a log and also shaped exactly the same as a log. There's a big sturgeon, but I'm told it's not Herman. Oh, I see Herman looking right at us. That's got to be Herman. That is a goliath of a fish. You can't really see it, I don't think, in the camera, but... Yeah, it is a monster. Holy smokes. Yeah, that's that's a 500-pound fish for sure. Everybody's left now besides Brian and I. Absolutely, and Herman's rewarding us. Putting on the show. Oh, yeah. What an absolute monster fish. And here's Herman on top. There's some human for scale. All right, one last stanza of Shadden, and we'll wrap it up. What makes sense? Maybe I should go. go right here. There we go. <laughs> For a second, I thought we'd have to split it. Oh no! Oh, maybe there's a chance. No! Oh. Oh. oh! No! <laughs> Just had to sit on it. <laughs> Thank you. I, I earned that one. <laughs> yes. Ooh, fish of the day, I think. Ooh, what a day, what a day. That's going to do it. So I fished actually from 5.30 to a little before 10. I know I edited this where I was doing those things in between fishing. That was just for pacing. I actually fished for a, like a four and a half hour chunk and then did everything else afterwards. But if I if I put it in that way, it'd be kind of a, a weird video where it's just fishing on the front and everything else on the back. So that's, that's why it's spaced out that way. But anyway, let's go look at the damage. Yeah, I don't know exactly how many I got. My goal was two dozen and I know I hit that. Uh, I don't know that I got over 30 though. So I'll say 25 to 30. So pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. So you know that's that's five six fish an hour, uh, and really it was slow at the beginning. It was it was slow till eight. So really it was basically between the eight to almost ten is where I got the vast majority of those fish. I'm gonna get some ice on them, but uh, what a blast! What a blast! You know, so next time you come out this way, if you haven't yet, uh, I think it's totally worth it to you know set aside some time to not just fish you know go on a hike go to the fish viewing area you know even go across the dam look at the sturgeon you know if you're on the washington side uh go get some food it's a great area like so many areas in washington so it's a good reminder myself to just uh, have, a, have a nice quest in addition to a nice catch so thank you so much see you next time on washington fish quest